Alright guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to write electron configurations for cations and anions. So let's get started. Uh, let's look at Mg. Mg is a good one to look at. Now this is neutral, just plain old Mg. Mg, its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s2. Notice that it's in the 3s2 location, so that's where I stop at. Okay, now, Mg as an ion is Mg plus 2. Remember, metals, want, they basically want to get rid of their um, valence electrons. Okay, so they freely give them up. Okay, now, basically, this thing loses 2 electrons. Now, looking at this, basically the neutral version of this, where is it going to get rid of two valence electrons? It's always going to throw, this is what your chemistry teachers will tell you, it's always going to throw away electrons from the outermost orbital. Basically look for the largest uh, principal quantum number, this three. Okay. If you have an S available, throw it away from it. If you have a P available with the largest principal quantum number on it, throw it away from them first, then the S. So if you have a 3P, we would have thrown away from the 3P here first before the 3S. But we don't have a 3P. So we're going to throw away two electrons. The two electrons that we're going to throw away will be from this Mg. So basically, the electron configuration of Mg plus 2 is that of a noble gas. And that noble gas is the 2P6 location, which is neon. So that's the way you do cations. Now, anions, basically... Um, ions that have a negative charge, okay, um, well let's look at one. Oxygen, we've done this one earlier, oxygen, neutral oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now oxygen as an ion is O with a negative 2 charge. Now your chemistry teachers usually write this 2 minus, but, you know, I've also got a degree in math, and it has always bothered me that you write 2 minus there, so I still write my negative 2. So those of you that are chemistry teachers watching this, don't hate me for it, okay? I'm sorry. You know, I am a chemistry teacher myself, but, you know, I'm also, like I said, i got a degree in math, and I just can't ever bring it to myself to write 2 minus. So I don't mean to insult anyone, so I apologize. Now, this negative 2 means... For this nonmetal of oxygen, nonmetals love to pick up extra electrons. They do so willingly because they love them. Okay. Now this oxygen is going to get two more electrons. Well, where is it going to put it? The S here is filled. This S here is filled, but this P orbital is partially filled. Well, I guess it's going to go there, and that assumption would be correct, since it is the highest principal quantum number 2 with the outermost orbital P that's partially filled, that's where it's going to go. So we're going to add two more electrons there. So this will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now, let's do another one, uh, one that may not be so uh, great to look at. Um, let's do... Oh, hmm. Let's do one for chlorine. Okay, Cl. Okay, let's do the neutral one first. Now, I always suggest that if you're going to do uh, do these, always look at the neutral one first before you make a decision on the negative one. That's just me, though. You know, since you're just learning how to do these for the first time. Chlorine, its location is the 3P5 uh, location, so keep that in mind when you write these. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. 3s2, and finally 3p5. Now that's plain chlorine. Okay, that's 3p5. That's neutral chlorine, what I mean by plain. Now, chlorine as an ion is Cl negative 1, meaning it gained an extra electron. Where do you put it? Well, you will put it in the partially filled p orbital. Now, when you do that, it gives it an electron configuration, that of a noble gas. That's the whole purpose of these uh, electrons being added and taken away from these elements. They basically want to have the most stable electron configuration possible. 
and chlorine gets so upset that it's just one short of an electron configuration of a noble gas. So that's why a lot of times, you know, almost always, you'll find chlorine as an as an anion because it's going to go get that extra electron. Now, um, as far as valence electrons, if you look here, uh, the valence electron count on, on Mg is 2. Uh, the valence electron count on Mg here is now 8. Notice here, the valence electron here is 6. But notice here now, on oxygen as an, as an anion is now 8. So basically, look here again on chlorine, that's 7 valence electrons, but as an ion, that's 8. Notice that's the whole purpose of these anions, basically these cations and anions. They want to have an electron configuration of a noble gas. Okay, that way they can be happy and content and perfect. Okay, just remember, noble gases are noble. That's that's the way they are. Okay, now remember these were the valence electron counts, and as far as paramagnetic and diamagnetic, uh, I'll just write D and P's beside these really quickly. That way you have them. Uh, for future reference. Uh, everything's filled here, so that's done. That's diamagnetic. Uh, this one, everything's full. It's diamagnetic. This one's partially filled, so it's P. Uh, this one is now uh, done. This one is partially filled, and this one is now done. So diamagnetic, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and diamagnetic. Okay. Now, in the next video, I'll go over some exceptions to the rules. I won't go over all the exceptions, but I'll go over the ones that I cover a lot in class. And I hope these help you understand how to do the electron configurations of anions and cations. All right, guys.